let's talk about how to get better at the clarinet 10 times faster, maybe a million times faster, and more fun. How is your practice organized? The first step in getting what you want out of your practicing is to have some very, very specific ideas running underground every note you play when you practice. And that sounds a little bit boring, but it's not. Let me tell you how. So first of all, your practicing is organized a little bit like a device we have in our hands every day, your phone. More specifically, your cellular telephone, not a landline phone, just in case you were confused about that. Our phones all come to us empty and we fill them up with the phone numbers we like to call, the people we like to text, the apps that we like to use. And I'm sure you're like me. Some of those phone numbers I don't call very much. Some of those apps I don't use very much. Some of them I use all the time and they're really, really important to me. And our practice techniques are those things, those, those apps, those things that we go to to solve problems. Now, here's the thing. When you're practicing, you have to have the shell of the phone, right? The empty phone. And that is the schematic by which we practice, the organizational structure by how we practice. And it's going to benefit you huge to have this idea where you have certain slots where you're doing certain things and through all of it. And here is the number one most important thing. Do not miss this. You have to have a purpose behind every note you play on the clarinet. You've got to be aware, you've got to be listening to it, and you've got to have some intent behind why you're playing it. That's really, really important. Uh, I've taught clarinet for about 30 years now, maybe more, uh, which is surprising, I know, because I don't look a day over 29, but I am. Uh, and here's what I see when I see practicing. I see people who are doing their best. They're very focused. They are trying as hard as they can. Oftentimes, they, they don't have this question of, why am I playing this note now? And what if I am trying to fix something? What am I trying to fix? That's not as active as it should be. And it's hard to keep that in the top of our brain all the time because the clarinet has a lot of keys on it. We're doing a lot of things. We're using a lot of systems. We're using our air. We're using our muscles. We're using our fingers. We're using, you know, a lot of, we're counting music. We're doing, we're doing a lot of stuff. We're looking at articulation. We're looking at dynamics. We're looking at a lot of things. And so I completely understand how we can get derailed from the idea of why am I playing this note? And let me tell you some reasons why you should be playing any note that you're playing. There are a surprisingly few number of reasons you should be playing those notes. Your purpose behind playing any of these notes, any of the, the notes on the clarinet is either you are putting yourself in the position to do your best practicing or best performing that day or rehearsing. Number two, you are identifying a challenge that you want to engage with. Number three, you are solving a problem that you have chosen to engage in. Or number four, you're practicing to deliver your very, very best performance when that performance happens. If you have one coming up, there's, that's a different kind of practice and we're going to get into that just a little bit. So within that, we have a purpose for every single thing that we're doing, right? This is very directed, intentional work because with that kind of intent, you are going to solve the problems that you have, that you've identified for yourself or your teacher has identified for you much more effectively. What I have found is effective problem solving leads to a feeling of accomplishment and joy and actual repeatable skills on the clarinet. And I think, I think that's what we're all looking for. All right. So how are you going to do it? The first thing is you are going to get your blank phone. There's nothing in it and you are going to organize it in, speaking metaphorically, right? You are going to organize your practice schedule in your head or on a piece of paper, however you want to do it. I will link some notes so that you can have us on a piece of paper so that you don't have to watch this video over and over again. You can if you want. You are going to start your practice with a warm up. What is a warm up? A warm up really is just putting yourself in the best position to play. When you're warming up, you're warming up your mouth muscles, your voicing, your fingers, your air, you're making sure your reads right. You're making sure your clarinet works right. You are in the position to play your best. When I go to a, a sporting match, I, I like to watch the warmups because, you know, people are doing specific things uh, to make sure that they are ready to perform their task. Uh, when I go to a basketball game, 
I don't see people trying to run faster in their warm up, trying to jump higher. They are doing things that are going to put themselves in the ability to maximize their ability when the game is on. And I think that that's an important analogy, right? We, in our warm up, are just trying to put ourselves in the place that when we are doing our actual improvement type of practicing, we are getting really good results of what we, what we hear and what we want to fix and what we've decided is a problem. So after we warm up, we're ready. Our read is usable. Maybe it's a perfect read. Put it away for the performance. But uh, you, get, you get the point. You're ready. You're ready to get better. And here's the thing. We're not talking about how to warm up. That's analogous to a specific app. You warm up how you warm up. You're gonna, that's going to change over the course of time as you do clarinet playing, as you practice. My warm up now is different than it was 30 years ago, different than it was 20 years ago, different than it was 10 years ago, different than it was two months ago, different than it was a month ago. It's going to morph as time goes on. And then you'll go back to some of the things you used to do. It's, it's, it's all fun and it's all cool. Great. Then you're done with that. Then we go into what I call skill development, which is, I would call it a porous border in between warming up and skill development. Because, you know, you're going to warm up playing some version of a scale, maybe, you know, this is, you know, a long tone. So there's tone, there's technique involved in the warm up. How could there not be? You're playing the clarinet. But then we move into the part where we are actually trying to get better at playing the clarinet. I call that category two, skill development. And that is scales, articulation, tone. I don't always put them in the same order. Sometimes I do tone first, articulations first sometimes, scales first sometimes. It's good to, to, do that. But never, I'm not really talking about that today. What I am talking about is the idea that in this skill development, you are tasked with the idea of identifying what it is that you want to engage with in terms of improvement. When you listen to it, you have to have this question. What am I trying to do here? Identify a challenge or solve a challenge, right? That's it. It's really that simple. It's hard to maintain that, but that's really what it is. If you play your D flat major scale in thirds and a note isn't clean, you've identified a challenge, engage with that challenge, work on that challenge, do that. It's not really a lot more than that. The challenge really becomes what's the best strategy to solve that problem. And let me tell you, that's what we talk about in the Clarinet Ninja Dojo. Check it out uh, with the link in the description. We talk about the most effective strategies to address any challenge you come up with on the clarinet. And then that's a very, very powerful thing. Uh, but the most powerful thing is having this schematic in your head where you are asking yourself the right question at the right time. The right question is, what is my purpose here? And then you should have an answer. And that answer is going to be different for everybody at every different moment when you're practicing. The important thing is to have the question, ask yourself that question, do it. So then you've done your skill development, tone, articulation, scales, whatever order you want to do it in. And then the third part of your practice is like an etude, an exercise, something that puts music to what it is that you have been developing your skills. Because we're developing our skills, not just in the abstract to, you know, be a killer at doing this. Sure, it's cool to be a killer, but that's not the point. The point is to be able to play music with these skills. So you got to do your etude, your exercise, whatever it is that you're working that takes those skills and puts them into musical action. And in that, we've had more things that we can be addressing. You should be addressing music and everything you do because everything should sound like music, but this is where we actually have music that we are playing to put these skills into. That broadens the question out. We, well, your purpose might be a musical purpose. Then all of a sudden we can talk about how do I make a crescendo on this note without losing the sound? Maybe that's what you've uncovered as the challenge you want to engage in today. And we go, but every time we practice, every time we start over, I mean, should you go back to the beginning? Should you go back to, you know, wherever you're practicing, like that, that one measure, two measures, three measures, that phrase, how are you going to do it? How are you going to organize that? Again, we talked about that in the dojo. I'm not talking about that today only because this video can't be an all day video. I could sit here all day and talk about this. I'd love it. I don't think you would. Okay. So the point is then the questions are not just clarinet questions. They're music plus clarinet, right? So uh, how do I get the right articulation? Uh, what articulation do I want even? Prior to the question, how do I get the right articulation? I mean, maybe your teacher has suggested something. Maybe I've suggested something. But the point is, you have an idea. I am trying to get this to be different. And then, okay, how do, how do I get that to be different? And then you do exercises to bring that change to life and make that represented in what you're doing. 
we need to be that focused when we're practicing because if we just play it over and over again, that is the long road to clarinet success. And the long road does go to the same destination. It's just longer. And I, um, I feel like a lot of people get to the point where they feel frustrated, like I'm never going to be able to do this. I can't do this, things like that. And none of that is true. I've never seen anybody who can't do this. Uh, it, there's different levels of challenge and frustration at times, but everybody can do it. It's a matter of asking yourself the right question and having the solutions at the ready to approach those challenges. Uh, so then we move into the literature part of it. This is maybe a piece that you're playing at your church or in your band or at an audition, or maybe you're playing a concerto with the New York Philharmonic. I don't know, whatever you're doing, this is where you're doing that. Okay, and, and it's the same idea. We'd have a, a musical situation that is aimed towards performance that we want. When we're practicing to get better at this, we want to do that same thing. Ask yourself the question, what, what is it that I want to be different in how I sound here? What is it that I'm hearing in my ear and how am I going to get it? Because the how you're going to get it is the same thing. What sort of skills are we going to need in order to make that happen? And in steps three and four, the etude and the literature part of it, that informs what we're checking for in our warm up, what we need to be able to do, what we can do that, what we were able to do the day before, we should be able to do it today. And then in the skill development part of it, that's where we take scale passages, particular scales, articulation challenges, or voicing challenges, air, you know, getting an even sound, whatever it is, that informs our skill development. And in our skill development, we want to do the things that are going to help us get a head start on the etudes and the literature. Now, the last part of this is the literature part. You might be at a place where you're practicing a little bit differently because I got to tell you, if I'm performing something a week from today, I'm not going to get that much better on that thing, right? Like I, if I've practiced right, I'm doing that as well as I can. I'm probably not going to level up in the next week. What I can do is get better at playing that as well as I can. So I got the skills I got. And I'm going with those. Those are the oars that you have to row your boat at that point. And what is important is to practice performing it. So that at that point, you might want to play it all the way through. You, know, you should play it all the way through. You should practice performing it. And that was going to give you the information you need about how to have a successful performance, which doesn't actually have anything to do with getting better at the clarinet in that moment. It just doesn't. There is practicing for performance and there's practicing to get better. And there are different things. And I've struggled with this for a long time because when I got the clarinet in my mouth, I want to get better at it and I want to get better all the time. And I will fiddle way too late in the game. I've learned that the hard way a lot of times. So again, no matter what you're doing, know why you're doing it. Are you warming up? Are you identifying a problem? Are you solving a problem? Or are you practicing to perform your best? And all of it comes with a real goal-oriented, outcome-focused approach to playing the clarinet. And it's going to really, really help any of the work that you're doing. Because when we just repeat something over and over and over and over, and we don't know what we're trying to change, or we do know what we're trying to change, we're just not actually taking any specific action to, to do so, that's what's called frustration. And I want you to stay away from that. So have this idea. You've got your practice outline. That is your empty phone. You put things into it that are going to benefit you, that are going to, that's for you. And again, I don't know a better place than the Clarinet Ninja Dojo to have the skills and the things that you need to fill up your empty phone or your practice schematic to really benefit you, to really put this on fire. Like you're going to go with that, that information, but get the information from wherever. I don't, I'd love it if you got the information from me, I'll be honest, but I don't really care. I just want you to be a clarinet player. And when I say good, I mean you play the clarinet the way you want to play and you play the music you want to play and you have a great time doing it. However you get to that point, I'm all for it. I just happen to know. I'm good at getting you to that point. Anyway, check out the dojo. I'll quit advertising. But do this so that you know what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how it's benefiting you. Let's say a crazy person walked by your practice room. I don't, I don't know how much foot traffic you have in your practice room, but let's say a crazy person walked by and said, why are you playing that? Have an answer. The answer should come like that. Seriously, that fast. 
I'm doing this because I'm trying to connect my registers. I'm doing this to keep my tone focused. I'm doing this so I can get a better articulation on that B flat. I'm doing this so that this note is better in tune. I'm trying to do this. Or I'm trying to figure out what it is that I am trying to make better or what it is that I want to be different. All these things should be happening all the time unless you're practicing for a performance, in which case you say, hey man, get out of here. Quit asking me questions. I've got a performance tomorrow. That's what you would say. At least if you're in, in New York where you get aggressive about things. Anyway, happy practicing and uh, I hope this was helpful to you.